Before we dive in there, I want to thank everybody for uh, those who were able to come out on yesterday uh, to be a part of our cleanup. Amen. We had over 30 some people here. Amen. Clap your hands. Amen. Amen. We're, great. we're grateful to those who were out here. They were in the flower bed. They were wiping down the pulpit. They were at the other house uh, cutting grass, weed whacking, doing the whole nine. Amen. So that we can keep our facilities up and take care of what God has given us. We appreciate uh, you carving out time out of your busy schedules to uh, be with us on yesterday. And uh, also, we just want to remind everybody, next week, Friends and Family Day. Friends and Family Day next week. Got a flyers for you uh, in the back. I'll bring one up before we do our announcements and all. We just want to uh, remind you, look, we, we got a dress down service, casual, so there's no, nobody can use that excuse. I don't have nothing to wear. Wear what you got. Amen? Amen. And, and if it's too revealing, we'll put a sweater on you. Praise the Lord. We, you know, come, come, come back to you. We, wanna, we, we don't want any excuses. We want to help expose people to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then we're going to have a cookout. Cookout after service. So some hamburgers, some hot dogs, and, and some fellowship. Amen, somebody? Amen. It's all about the fellowship. And uh, we're looking forward to having a great time in the Lord. We won't have a second service on yet on, um, at the end of next week. Uh, but we're looking forward to uh, Sunday morning next week, Friends and Family Day. So we're going to be sending out some more stuff on Facebook. And I uh, want you to pass out the flyers that we have here to get the word out. Great things are happening. We know when they come, they'll be blessed uh, by the word of God. John chapter 4. John chapter 4. Uh, beginning at verse number 10. Everybody in the house have a Bible? You have a Bible? Yes. Right. If you don't have a Bible, raise your hand. We'll make sure one is available to you. Uh, Brother Eric, can you put up 646? Uh, just a little talk to Jesus. I don't know about you, but just a little talk to Jesus to make everything all right. We'll say the verse or two of that, and then we'll be uh, down into our lesson for the day. <clears throat> I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me well, and then a love of light from heaven filled my soul. Oh, you know he paid my heart in love, and you wrote my name up. You know that just a little with Jesus makes me whole. Beginning at verse number 10. 
and the boundaries. And Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked, and he would have given you living water. Amen. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well? And drank for you from it yourself, as well as the son of his livestock. Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst, nor come here to draw. Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come here. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. And Jesus said, You have well said, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands. And the one whom you have is not your husband. And that you spoke truly. The woman said to him, Sir, I, I perceive that you're a prophet. Our fathers worship on the mountain of the Jews, say that it's in Jerusalem, the place where you ought to worship. And Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. Uh, we know that we worship for salvation is of the Jews, but the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. God is spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. The woman said to Him, I know that the Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When He comes, He will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am He. From the time allotted, I want to speak to you this morning from the subject, a life-changing encounter with Jesus. A life-changing encounter with Jesus. If you haven't had one, you got to get you one. Amen. A life-changing encounter with Jesus. For those of you uh, who are taking notes out there, we got three points for you this morning. Number one. An encounter with Jesus will help you realize how much God loves you. An encounter with Jesus will help you to realize how much God loves you. Number two, God can use you despite your brokenness. Amen, somebody. God can use you despite your brokenness. And number three, you can make an impact by sharing your testimony. You can make an impact by sharing your testimony. One through three. One more time. Number one, an encounter with Jesus will help you realize how much God loves you. Number two, God can use you despite your brokenness. And number three, you can make an impact by sharing your testimony. And at this time, man, this, this whole chapter is just rich with so much. Can't preach the whole thing. Might have to do a part two of this thing. But uh, I want to pick up. Let's start at verse 27. I want to keep going just a little bit. Y'all mind reading the Bible in the church? All right. And at this point, his disciples came and they marveled that he talked with a woman. Yet no one said what do you seek, or why are you talking to her? The woman then left her water pot and went into a city and said to the men, Come see a man who told me all the things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came to him. In the meantime, his disciples urged him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to him, I have food to eat. Of which you do not know. Let me drop down to verse number 39. Uh, 
It talks about the fields of wine on the harvest and things of that nature. My, my food is to do the will of the Father. Then verse number 39, the Bible says, And many of the Samaritans of that city believed in him because of the word of the woman who testified. He told me all that I ever did. What a testimony. So when the Samaritans had come to him, they urged him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days, and many more believed because of his word. Then they said to the woman, now we believe, not because of what you said, but we ourselves have heard of him, and we know that this is indeed the Christ, the son of the word. A life-changing encounter with Jesus. Has Jesus made a difference in any of you all's lives? Yes. We have a woman who had a reputation. Jesus coming from one city and now he's going through the curb coast and he enters a city called Sychar. This was considered a, a Gentile or Samaritan region and just to give you some background, you have to understand that the uh, Jews and the Samaritans uh, had no dealings. There was a strong racial divide. You have uh, the, Jew the Jews uh, who were considered the pure breeds, and you have the Samaritans who were considered the half-breeds. They were part Jew and they were part Gentile. And we know that the Jews and the Gentiles really had no dealings. And, and there was a racial divide. And the Jews viewed the Samaritans as the gum on the bottom of our shoe. And then we have a text where Jesus says, I must needs go through this city. Now, typically, because the Jews and the Samaritans have no dealings, the Jews would take the long way around to get to certain destinations. But Jesus took the shortcut. And he realized even going through this shortcut way that I might run into some Samaritans along the way. But that didn't bother him. That would have bothered some of us. That would have bothered some others. But that didn't bother Jesus. At the beginning of the text, the Bible indicates that he was tired and he was weary and he sat down by the way. And the Bible indicates that it was about the sixth hour of the day. Noon time will be our time. And the Bible says that he was weary and there was a woman from the city who came up and she, uh, Jesus asked her a question. He says, give me a drink. Now the problem uh, with the question that Jesus asked is that now Jesus is talking to a woman in public. And what you have to understand, this went against Jewish code. This went against the norm of the day. Uh, women, in some cases, were considered second-class citizens, and they weren't deemed to have an open conversation with a male at this time, and especially not a rabbi. And Jesus openly begins a dialogue and a conversation with this woman. And the Bible indicates that as Jesus, in verse number three, he left Judea and departed into Galilee, but he must needs go through Samaria. So he came to the city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the plot of ground by Jacob. And now uh, Jacob's well was there. He was weary. He was tired. Anybody ever been tired before? His journey. And, and thus, by the well, it was about the sixth hour, the woman of Samaria came and Jesus said to her, give me a drink. And his disciples had gone away at this time. They probably would have questioned him then. They went into the city to buy some kosher food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, how is it that you being a Jew asked me to give you a drink? Number one, there's a racial divide among us. And she says in the text, Jesus, you know the Jews and the Samaritans have no dealings with one another. And then on top of that, I'm a woman and you're a man and you're trying to have an open dialogue with me. Is there something going on? Is this a setup? <laughs> Is this real? Jesus asked her for a drink of water and then, but also you got to understand, he came to the well asking for a drink and then he didn't have anything to draw with. You're asking me for a drink. There's a racial, there's a racial divide that's here. You're a man and I'm a woman and you're asking me for a drink at the well and you came and you don't even have anything to draw with. This was a deep well. She had what she needed, but it didn't look like Jesus had what he needed. Now, now, 
Uh, you don't have a dipper, but I do. Now, what do you expect to drink from? Now, I know you're not even thinking about what, what I think you might be thinking about. I've got mine, but you don't have yours. And see, this was orchestrated. And I can see it illustrated by the Holy Spirit connecting the two at this particular time. But notice this woman, she came at the sixth hour, which was 12 noon of the day. That would have been in the heat of the day. The only time you would come to the well at the heat of the day is when you're trying to avoid some fault. Because the well was just like the barbershop or the hair salon when all the gossip would go along. They will walk from the outskirts of the city to the inskirts of the city in order, look, that was a dwelling place. After walking so far, carrying your job, you will rest a while when you would get to the well. And y'all know how y'all be talking about people and stuff like that? All oh, that was going on there. And the Bible, uh, it indicates, notice this woman, she came at 12 o'clock because she had a reputation in the city. Not only was she uh, uh, married uh, uh, once or twice or three times or four times, but Huh? Five times. And you gotta understand, cultures then view that thing very differently. Many cases, uh, even when it came to divorce, uh, you know, it was typically the man who asked for the writing of the divorcement. The woman, in many cases, didn't even have a right to ask for divorce. So this we see in many cases that this one, this man, this woman was put away several different times by other men. This woman was dealing with a form of brokenness. This woman was dealing with some insecurities. This woman was dealing with some things she wasn't proud of that she was involved in, but she was still dealing with it in her life. Am I on anybody's street? Oh, y'all look like y'all always been perfect in your life. But the reality is, as we go through this life, we've done some things that we're not proud of. We've done some things that we're ashamed of. That's some things you've done. You ain't even told your best friend because they'll look at you cross out. You did what? You were with who? Oh, okay, okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But the concept was this woman, she comes. She's trying to avoid the, the traffic that would normally be there early in the morning or later in the evening. She comes in the heat of the day to avoid some people. And I'm coming just to get my water to avoid some folk. And look who's there. The Son of God there. Thirsty. But then notice he had a dialogue with her. And I'm telling you, even on this morning, the encounter with Jesus changed this woman's life forever. And I start about to tell you, once you and I have an encounter with him, you and I ought to not ever be the same. He begins to take the lady from her everyday problems, physical thirst, and her cravings of the satisfaction of the inner and the spiritual and the energy needed of trying to satisfy those longings. We all need to hear and be shown by others that we are loved. Amen, somebody? Amen. We need this assurance because sometimes in life we get knocked down. We have experiences of doubt and depression. Y'all know the line, loneliness and helplessness and even sometimes worthlessness. You can be dressed up, suited and booted and still not feeling good about yourself. Amen, Amen somebody? Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then we peruse the text in verses 6 to 8. Jesus asked the woman to give me a drink from his zipper. The problem was that he didn't come with anything. Notice her response at 9. You know that the Jews and Samaritans, they don't do any favors for each other. But listen to the master in verse 10. Jesus answered her and said, if you knew the gift of God, and who it was that says to you, give me a drink, you would have asked me to give me living water. See, what are we saying, preacher? If you only knew who you were talking to. If she only knew. She was talking to Jesus and didn't know. Jesus told the woman, if you only knew who you were talking to, you would have asked me for living water. Yes, we're talking about the temporal water that we came to the well for, but once you come today, you've got to come again tomorrow. Amen, somebody? At this well, you've got to keep coming for. He said, but when I am able to give you this thing called eternal life and, and this, you, know, you having the indwelling of the spirit, which is able to continue to fill you over and over, you won't have the same spiritual thirst in which you're suffering from right now. Yeah. Neighbors and friends, I'm here to tell you that the Lord is no respecter of persons. He didn't allow any racial divide to get in his way from helping this hurting soul. Amen, somebody. 
I stopped by to tell you that the Lord loves you whether anybody told you that or not today. Bible says in John 3 and verse number 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5 and verse number 6, For we were yet without strength, and at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Guess who the ungodly were? You and me. Some of us used to lie. Some of us used to steal. Some of us used to play the numbers and run around and do some other stuff. I, I'll stop there before y'all get upset. But some of us used to. I hope we don't have no more steal, is it? Ain't that somebody? But the Bible says in Romans 5 and verse number 8, But God demonstrated his love toward us in that while we were yet still, still in sin, Christ died for us. That's everlasting love. Do you, do you understand that? God loved us at our worst. Amen, somebody? So that's why in your competition of trying to do things to please him, you can't do anything for God to love you anymore because he loved you when you were at your worst. Amen, somebody? You got a God that loves you when the world tells you you're nobody. That the kids at school tell you, you don't, you don't, you're not smart enough. You don't measure up. Amen, somebody? But don't believe the hype. You, the Bible tells us that we're fearfully and wonderfully made, and God loves you. The Bible says in Romans 8, and verse number 31, if God be for us, who can be against us? Romans 8, and verse number 37, the Bible says, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. We have to hold on to God even in our darkest hour. Amen, somebody. God never promised us that living the Christian life was going to be a walk in the park because he said in 2 Timothy 3, 12, yea, all them that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. You're going to go through some difficult times, but as long as you have me, you can make it through. See, when you have an encounter with Jesus, you don't have to respond like the world responds to situations. You don't have to go to your trunk of the car. Ain't that somebody? When somebody says something sideways, you ain't got to start kicking your shoes off and taking your earrings off. Ain't that somebody? Get your Vaseline all up on your face. You ain't got to do all that because you done had an encounter with Jesus. Y'all acting like y'all know what I'm talking about today. Ain't that somebody? See, when you done had an encounter with Jesus, see, you, you, you and your spouse, you ain't got to pack up all your stuff. Sometimes y'all might like, y'all might feel like, I, I, I ain't going to say, this is new, no, see, y'all might feel like doing that, but, but sometimes, but, but see, because you had an encounter with him, you got to learn to love that spouse in spite of themselves. You say, you know what, they don't even deserve my love, just like you ain't deserve the Lord. Amen, somebody. You, we got a mutuality. There's something in common, but you got to realize you still love by God. An encounter with Jesus will stop you from going to jail. Amen, somebody? I'm talking about an encounter with Jesus. Yeah, yeah, you got to understand. Brothers and sisters, everybody need to realize that you are loved. You say, I'm adopted, but you've been adopted by somebody. You're loved, child. And see, one of the things we also have to realize that we, look, 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 despite God can use you despite the brokenness that you may have in your life. Why did she come there and knew? Because she had some insecurity. She was tired of being talked about. She didn't want to hear it anymore. She would go late or she would go midday at the times when there wouldn't be a lot of people because she knows how people are. Uh, you know how people are too, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But see, she, God wanted her to be able to realize that I can use you despite some of the things that you may go through. And then the woman, Jesus said, uh, uh, in verse number 12 of the text, he said, are you greater than the father Jacob? Man, she didn't know who she was talking to. Is he greater than Jacob? Yeah. Who gave us the well and drank from it as well? And Jesus answered her, whoever drinks of this water, they will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. That's good news, sir. The woman said to him, sir, give me this water. Y'all right? The woman said, give me this water that I might not thirst and neither come to draw. Yes, you might not know me that well, sir, but I got some stuff that I'm dealing with in my life. I've got some insecurities. I've got some hang-ups. I've got some low points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She said, Lord, if you got all that, I want some of that. Give me some. 
some of that water. I know you, I know you initially asked me for some water, but after you started talking, I need the water that you had. Mm. Mm. From verses 11 to 15, Jesus discusses the living water that's able to offer and he puts in, she puts in her request for some. We all come to the Lord on all kinds of baggage, am I right? This woman was no different. She was broken. She was burdened. And she was begging. Listen to how the Lord begins to deal with her issue. Yeah, Jesus got all up in her business. He began in 16 to verse number 26. And she started talking about the forefathers and where the Samaritans worshipped it. And where the Jews worshipped it. What mountain they worshipped on. They, uh, they, they, they believe that you worship in the Mount of Gergeson. And then the Jews believe you, you worship in Jerusalem. But Jesus just flips the strip on this thing. He said, yeah. Uh, uh, the matter of that where you worship is not really the, the essence of the issue. He said, but when you worship God, you got to learn and make sure that you're worshiping him in spirit and in truth. Amen, somebody? Amen. See, only acceptable worship to God is that which is done in spirit and in truth. You can have all the zeal you want, but if it's not laced with truth, it won't be acceptable to God. Amen. I think I said something. Amen, somebody? Because Jesus is dealing with this woman. He's dealing with her inner issue. He had to bring up that truth portion because he was about to charge her and challenge her with some information. And after he got finished this discourse, he then begins to say, why don't you go get your husband? He said, Jesus, we weren't even talking about family. We weren't even talking about the relation. But that's Jesus. He gets to the point that I got to go for the juggler. He said, look, I, I got to come. And guess what? We serve a God that knows how to get all up in your business. Amen, somebody? I know people say, well, you know, brother, that's why, you know, I, I don't study the Bible, you know, because the Bible scares me. I, I, it wouldn't scare you if you do the right thing. Amen, somebody? Amen. Yeah, we scared because we're talking about hell. We live in hellish way. I'm sorry, we got some, some, some little kids in here, but, 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 but hell is real. Huh? Heaven's a prepared place for prepared people, but hell is a prepared place for unprepared people. And we got to be but that's what, that's what, that's what Satan's going to try to discourage you. He's going to try to distract you. He's going to keep you caught up in everybody else's stuff. And before you know it, you're going to miss heaven. You still mad over something. And that person you mad at, they had already asked for forgiveness for God. They vertical with God. If you still mad on the side, they're going to go to heaven and you're going to miss it. You're going to go somewhere else. Smile, you won't have to Yeah, yeah, that's a reality in our lives. And sometimes we can stay hung up over some situations and some circumstances, but you and I, we need to have an encounter with God that can change our hard hearts. Sometimes God's word can't even penetrate our hearts because our minds are already set. Our minds are already fit. I'm not going to do that right now. I know the Bible says with, with stain and, 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 and refrain and, and withhold, and, but I'm, I'm me. It's my body. I'm going to do what I want. But if you've been here over that story, so you realize your body is not your own. You didn't even give yourself the body that you operate with even today. Amen, somebody. That's right in the but the God we share, this woman, she won, this woman, she was broken, y'all. She had some stuff that she had to deal with, and God got all up in her business. Sometimes he's he, he talking about me. He all on my toes. Let me tell you something. If I, if I ain't talking about you, my messages are irrelevant. <laughs> y'all get that on the way home. <laughs> Look, he don't talk about nothing that relates to me. I, if, I, if I never touch on it, my messages will be irrelevant. But guess what? What is it? It's God's word dealing with you. Was he at my house? Was he looking through my window? No, I have my own house, my own window. I kind of keep stuff right in there. Hey, man, so I, I, you know, I ain't paying police on the church looking through your window. I ain't got time for all of that. God watching you. How did he know? God knows. You can go all the way to California to preach and get up and preach a message that dealing right with your stuff. You can't run from God. Amen, somebody? Some of the things we dealing with some stuff. And men, many times we struggle with the fact of surrendering to God and turning it over to him. Amen, somebody? You still think you can be the boss of everything. You still think you can run everything until you run into a situation where can't nobody help you. Mama can't help you. Wife can't help you. Girlfriend can't help you. And, and, and look, the only person that got you out is God. The doctors didn't even know what to do for you. They sent you home. But it's God. It's the only one that can bring you out. Amen, somebody? 
Yeah, you got to understand. Look, look, God sometimes gets in our stuff. He gets on our street. Look, to reform us, to change us. Part of his nature is transformation. If he doesn't transform, God ain't doing his job. Amen. The Bible says uh, the word of God is quick, which is living, it's powerful, and it's sharp. It cuts both ways, but, but look, it, it's able to discern thoughts and the intents of the heart. And sometimes God's word deals with us so that we can change, not so we can go to hell, but so we can go to heaven. Sometimes we need to hear that it's not about you. It's not only about your way. You didn't create things. It's all about God. Who is it about? But you? It's about God. It's, it's about God. Wives and husbands, you got to stop. Look, let me tell you something. Sometimes you can be right. You can be right the wrong way. Huh? You say, I won that fight, but you lose in the battle. Y'all go further apart. You walk around, I was right, I was right. And then you got to open your own door. You got to drive yourself everywhere. You got, oh, you go right all the wrong way. Okay, let me deal with somebody else. But y'all get mad all the time. Y'all just so bad. I'm praying that y'all stop getting so bad. <laughs> Try to talk about somebody else. But sometimes, look, God needs to get up in our stuff. There's some attitudes that we need to let go. Amen, somebody? Even with the point of faithfulness. Why keep talking about content? Why keep talking about serving the law? Look, because you can't stay the state you are. If the state in which you came to Christ was okay, he wouldn't need to change you. Amen. What you say? It's not about you. It's not about you. God is trying to grow you. But if you got one foot in the church, one foot out in the world, look, let me tell you something, you make it a disgrace to his name. You, look, he needs you to be light, even in the midst of darkness. If you were in Bible class this morning, you'd get that. He commands us to be light, even in the midst of the darkness around. Amen. When, when those that was a problem with the church that lay out of sea, they were lukewarm. Huh? You know, you know how God felt about lukewarmness? He said, you guys make me want to vomit you out of my mouth. What? We say, Lord, I'm a Christian sometimes, but sometimes I love the world too, Lord. Sometimes I just get confused. You better stop dancing back and forth and make a decision. You better choose you this day who you're going to serve. Joshua said in Joshua 24 and verse number 15, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. We got too many Christians that's on the fence. People need to know where you stand. Do people on the college campus know where you stand? They, they, you, we, we might know where you stand on Sunday, but what about the rest of the week? Do people know you're a Christian by looking at your Facebook page? Amen, somebody. <laughs> See, some of the stuff you share might not always be God. Huh? Or you Instagram, or you Snapchat, young people in your text message. If you just listen, look through your text message, people believe, and, 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 and can you convince them that you belong to God? Huh? Or do you belong to the Word? See, God, he was a person that got all up in us. He, Jesus, he didn't just switch the whole conversation. He said, uh, go get your husband. She like, huh? Say, what? Huh? Well, she said, uh, oh, yeah, I, I don't have a husband. Uh, yeah, you could say, well, because you didn't have. Why? <laughs> See, some of y'all, y'all been to fought Jesus right there at the well. <laughs> who you talk? Hey, hey, who you and I'm a, I mean, you throwing the water jug at him and everything. Some of y'all just really went off on the Lord. And guess what? And what he said was still right? Well. Huh? Y'all well, get that? Well, he was at the way. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He would have been mad, but he still was right. All he was doing was stating the facts. He said, you done had five and the one you with. Y'all finished the rest. I, I ain't even finished that. But y'all, the one you in does not belong to you. As I, as I mentioned earlier, th this woman couldn't keep a man or the men didn't want to keep her. Whatever. The situation, they will give you a complex either way. You can just tell this woman was broken emotionally. You know everyone in town was talking about her. Well, I still got my one up. I don't know what's wrong with her. You know how some of y'all do? Don't get quiet on me. You know how we talk, you know. Uh, not, not we, y'all, y'all. Uh, when she was walking by uh, some of the uh, women's husbands and, 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 and y'all just bring your husband closer. Because you know she got a track record. 
this woman was talked about and was messed up. And I stop by to tell you that uh, you can't ever get so low where God's love can't reach you. Huh? The God we serve, he still goes after even the most broken. The one society that has already put on the shelf and dejected, those are the ones that God had a conversation with. Those prostitutes, those publicans, those tax collectors, the, the scum of the earth, if you will. These are the ones that Jesus had an encounter with. Now that I know Christ, you and I, we can have hope. Listen to the woman's response after Jesus dug up in her business. She says, sir, are you a prophet? <laughs> can you imagine can you imagine you're meeting somebody for the first time and then they start reading your mail he said oh, oh that makes you back up a little bit hold on is, is this on google how, how do you know this about me she said in verse number 25 and 26 the woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. And when he comes, he's going to tell us all things. Now, that she didn't realize who she was talking to, did she? Huh? <clears throat> she said, when he comes, he's going to tell us all things. And then Jesus said to her, who I who speak, I'm he. Can you imagine? But notice what happens. There's a shift in the dynamic. And at this point, his disciples came and they marveled that he talked with the woman. See, that was a problem. Lord, what are you doing? We don't do this problem. Man, this goes against code. Look, they thought it within themselves, but they ain't say nothing. See, notice what the Bible said in verse number 27. Uh, his disciples came and they marveled that and they talked with the woman. They talked with the woman, yet no one said, what do you see? Oh, why are you talking to her? Because that was against custom. Lord, what are you doing? He's a reformer. He was a transformer. The woman then, she left her water pot and went her way into the city. Notice this. After her encounter with Jesus, what used to be important wasn't that important no more. Why did she come to the well? To get water. Guess what she left in the well? A word of life. What do you say, preacher? An encounter with Jesus ought to change your life. An encounter with Jesus ought to change your dynamic. Amen, somebody? And see, that change ought to become evident in your living. That change ought to become evident in your walk. That change ought to become evident in your talk. Amen, somebody? We can't just be talking about it. We got to be about it. From the young on up to the old. From the old on down to the young. Amen, somebody? Amen. We ought to be sweet like Jesus. Y'all call it sweet Jesus. Well, you need to be sweet like him. Amen, somebody? Amen. Sweeten up the conversation when you start talking. Amen. Amen. Now, now, now. See, we can understand that God can use us even despite our brokenness. How, 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 how does this dynamic? You see, you got to understand that you can make an impact by sharing your testimony. Now, notice what happened. She left her water pot. And she went back in town. Remember, she was trying to avoid people at first. But man, an encounter with Jesus will change up your dynamic sometime. And notice she goes to the townspeople and, and she begins to say in verse number uh, 28, the Bible said the woman left her water pot and went on her way to the city and said to the men, come see a man who told me all the things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ. Yeah, that's the Christ. That's what he told you he was. But you know, he remembers the Bible. We still be doubting a little bit. Huh? But notice, she left because of that encounter. She went into town where people were. And then she said, let me tell you something. I, I might not be credible in a whole lot of things, but I just saw a man who told me everything that I had did. And could this be the Christ? And think about this. This woman, she had the greatest reputation. But there were people who followed her. But I believe when she came, she had a level of excitement in her voice. When she came to the people, she had a level of urgency about the matter. Amen? So the Bible indicates that the people 
And she went out of the city, and the Bible says, and came to him. Come see a man who told me all the things that I ever did. Could this be the Christ? And, and they went out of the city, and they came to him. After she went with her testimony, they began to follow. But then they noticed the dynamic in verse number 39. The Bible says that many of the Samaritans of the city believed in him because of the word of the woman who testified, he told me all that I ever did. They were looking for the Messiah to come, and she's saying, look, I don't follow the Messiah. He's right over here. And so everybody ran, and they began to believe on him. So when the Samaritans had come to him, they urged him to stay with him, and they stayed there two days. Remember this, there's a racial divide. We don't have no dealings. But when Jesus gets involved, even racial disparities can go away. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. You can have governments that don't normally talk to each other get start talking when Jesus gets involved. When we have an encounter with Jesus, he begins to transform and change everything about the dynamic. <laughs> this woman had an encounter at the well with a man that she would never forget. He just wasn't any man. He was Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. She was so touched and moved by his love and compassion and wisdom, she left her water pot and went into the city. Come, see a man. Church, we have to be like this woman and go tell others about the man named Jesus who turned our lives around. People need to know that there's still hope in heaven. And it makes no sense for God to totally transform our lives and sit on our testimony. Oh, I know I just said something. It makes no sense. You say, oh man, the Lord is blessing me. Oh, I'm getting a good word. Oh, 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 I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. And then you don't tell nobody about how blessed you are. Or you don't tell anybody about the source of your blessing. What sense does that make? If you're so blessed, why don't you share it like this woman? Amen? The one who tried to avoid folk to begin with, but now she became a witness and an armor bearer and a standard bearer for the Lord Jesus Christ. Watch the text, verse 39. Many of the Samaritans believed on Jesus. Amen. Now the question is why we have to keep reading. The scripture said, as because of this woman's testimony and the things in which she said. Those people who got so excited about the word, they asked Jesus to stay with them and more, even more believed. How did they hear about Christ? It was from a woman who was broken, burdened, and bent. But she was touched by the matchless messianic master from the dusty streets of Jerusalem. Church God look, is looking to us. He wants to use us as his tools to teach the gospels to a lost and a dying world. But if people don't see any transformation in you, they won't be sold on the message. You say, well, well, well what's, the greatest, what's the greatest testimony that we can uh, uh, present to others? A changed life. That's the greatest test of a changed life. You need to find some people in your life who used to know you. Amen? Yeah. I told you, I told you, at, uh, uh, at, at uh, uh, restaurants years, years ago. That's where I started preaching. Well, I think I started preaching, yeah. And uh, I was out with my family, and, you know, one of them jungle gyms, jungle, jungle gym park things with my kids, and somebody sitting there looking across at me. I was in my hometown then, and uh, this little girl said, uh, Norman, is that you? I was getting a little nervous. You know? Yeah, it's me. No, it's me. And, uh, yeah, it's me. She said, no, I heard you was a preacher. I said, is that true? I was like, yeah, yeah, that's true. She said, I never would have thought. <laughs> My wife said, right there, I never would have thought that you'd be a preacher. What? And that's how I'm just, ain't God good? Yes. He can even change me. <laughs> and that's the message. God, there's some folk who know where you used to go. How you used to cut up, huh? How you and Pookie them and then all your boys and your cut buddies and the thing y'all used to do and the stuff y'all get into, huh? Well, y'all, you know, you know, y'all turn the club out. Well, some of y'all used to call it the bar. Y'all turn the bar out, huh? The bar tend to say no more, no more, no more, no more. There's some things we used to do, but now that you've had an encounter with Jesus, you don't do those things anymore. I 
noticed your post used to be this and now it's that. He said, what happened? Jesus. Gee, I, I've had an encounter with a man that changed my life. Amen? And, and, and sisters, my single sisters, and you looking for a man? See, before you look for, for, for a physical man, you need to know the man first. Make sure you know him. And see, God will, he, he, he'll, make, he'll make it so that that other man will show up and you'll know what attributes to look for. But he's got to have some God in him first, amen, to service you with. But you got to make sure you got an allegiance to God first. Sometimes I said, I mean, look at, look at, are you faithful to him first? See, in order, see, in order for you to be faithful to him, you got to be faithful to him. Oh, man, I just said something. Y'all didn't realize what I just said. <laughs> Oh, Hammers. Boy, that's some good preaching. Well, I'll scare you. Woo! If you only knew the impact you can have by sharing your testimony about how Christ has changed your life. Can you imagine how this church would take off if it all started sharing our own testimony and teaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ with the Great Commission? And as Jesus said in Matthew 28, 18 through 20, go ye therefore teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I've commanded you. He said, in so doing, I'll be with you always, even unto the end of the world. Church, let us be about the Father's business and take this city for Christ. The devil has been trying his way too long. He's been having his way way too long with God's people. And it's time to stand up and be about our Father's business. If you're here today, you don't know Christ. You don't. Look, let me tell you something. You, you, it's time for you to get to know him. If you only knew who you were talking to. If you only knew who you were bypassing. Amen, somebody. You keep talking about crying and complaining about my life and it, 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 it still have not changed. Have you tried him faithfully? Not every now and then. Amen. Not once a month. Not once every other week. Not, no. Faithfully. I'm having a dedicated, carved out conversation with God and I'm allowing him to speak to me through his word. It's one thing to sit up here and look cute at church and still not know God any more from 10 years ago than you do now. That's how some people are. That's why carnal waves pop up every now and again. Let somebody say something you don't like. You turn into the devil river. The claws come out. They change. Huh? Yeah, see, part of your level of maturity has a lot to do with your response. You know, I'm going to take 35 years. Well, shit, look, I, I expect the most grace from you. I expect the most humility from you. Amen. I expect the most service from you. See, but see, sometimes what you'll come to understand, tenure in and of itself doesn't equate with spirituality. Yes. Huh? I know folks, they've been in the church 35 years, still can't eat a plan of salvation. Uh, where, that, where, that, where that paperwork at? Where that paperwork? What you mean, paperwork? You've been in 35 years. You ought to know it by heart, saying every single week. But when I come down to close, y'all, just check me right out. Well, where the bulletin at? It's on the bulletin. But see, we got to know. We got to be engaged. Just like we start with the SWAT team. We're here on Thursday. I wish we had some more people here. We're learning one-on-one -on -one how to engage people and teach them the gospel of Jesus Christ. Look, so that more of us can be involved in the process. Why? Because that's what God wants. Yeah. He's not concerned about your own personal creature comforts. He didn't save us to sit. He saved us to serve. You say, well, what are you here for, sir? We come to worship him. What does that mean? That's something that you've got to give up. He wants you to give up your praise because he gave up your, his air. Amen, somebody. Because he gave up his strength. He's, he, in order for you to work that ship, in order for you to be able to go to school, in order for you to be protected throughout the course of this week, God had to operate and do some work. Because all you have to do is just turn on the news. There were folk who pass away every day. Whether it's a train situation, or it's a car situation, or a helicopter situation. Somebody else is being abducted. All kinds of stuff is going on every single day. But God touched you with his finger of love. Made provision for you, not just for you, but your children as well. And your grands, and your great grand, And he's still making provision even right now. But the question is. Romans 5, verse 8, Bible says, God demonstrates his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The question is, how are you going to demonstrate your love toward him? What are you going to give up more? What are you going to sacrifice more? You remember the beginning of the year, I said you need to have one more uh, Bible class than you were already getting. Have you done it yet? You still got the expectation of God blessing you. He's already doing that, but the question is, what are you giving up? 
What are you willing to give up more? If that's anybody worth giving up something for, it's God. Because folks will tell you they love you one minute and they'll walk out of your life and never look back. That's what people will do. You got family members to do that. He said, no, man, man. And once they can get what they can get from you, they go. Huh? Manipulators will never, they'll always be in the world. But you got a God who, who never sleeps or slumps, who will never leave you nor forsake you. That's the one we, we sacrifice the least for. We got to get, look, we got to get beyond that point. Man, when you have an encounter with God, it ain't nothing you want to do. That's too much. That's too much. That's who? Tell, man, don't tell that to God. That, that, don't, don't tell that to the God who's making all the provisions for you. That's like, you know, sacrifice and try to buy something for your child that you couldn't afford, and they say, that's all you got? <laughs> After they done woke up off the floor, you say, I mean, you say, what do you mean? But sometimes that's what we say to God in our actions. Lord, that's too much. Another class, that's just too much. That, that's just too much. When he's the one, you say, well, I got to go to work. How do you get to work? When you drive in your car, who makes sure you're protected back and forth? You say, well, I'm a good driver. They don't speak very much on the road. See, sometimes the provision he makes, he, look, he's been so good, we take him for granted. Man, let me tell you something. We got to get to the point. We don't take the God who makes all things possible for granted. That's from the young on up to the old, from the old on down to the young. Let's be the best examples we can be. We got to out the message. He said, well, one, don't you want other people to be blessed like you? Or you might not realize, you don't like this You're blessed. She had an encounter with Jesus, and I know she was never the same. Amen? Amen. If there was hope for this woman who had a messed up lifestyle, who had instability when it came to men and circumstances and hope, she met a man that would never leave her. Or forsake her. She, she, she met a man who was true to his word. Amen, somebody. Amen. And we need to serve a God who has all things in his hand. If you don't know Jesus in the part of your sins, you need to come to him today. You come to Jesus by hearing the gospel message, believing the same, and repenting of your sins. See, that's making a change of mind that then leads to a change of action. It's easy to say it in an emotional state, but then you got to think about it and say, look, I've been living for me, that really got worked out too well, now it's time for me to really turn to God and really serve him. And see, what I say all the time, you got to learn to see your change through. It's easy to make a statement on Sunday, but then you got to live it on Monday. Amen? Amen. Now, now we got to be willing to make that same, that great confession, the same confession that the unit made in Acts 8, 26 on down to the end. He said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And be willing to be baptized for the remission of your sin. The water's ready. The clothes are ready. You only have to get your clothes, uh, uh, you know, wet. Amen? We, we, let, 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 he said, well, I, I messed my hair. we got a cap for you as well. We, we try to make all the provisions we can make so that you can obey Jesus. Why do I have to be baptized? Because that's what Jesus commanded. Mark 16, 16, Jesus said, He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be condemned. Peter preached the first gospel sermon in Acts 2. In Acts 2, verse number 37, the Bible says, uh, When they heard this, they were cut to the heart. They said, Men and brother, what shall we do? In verse number 38, the Bible says, He said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins. And then you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And verse number 41, the Bible says that they did gladly receive this word about times, and they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. You say, well, well, I heard other preachers say on TV, I heard other preachers down the street. I heard, let me tell you something. Don't, don't, <laughs> there's nothing that becomes more true other than out of the words of the mouth of God. Yes. Amen? Yes. People say a lot of things. People have a lot, say a lot of things that have you jacked up. But when you can look at it in black and white, amen, somebody? That ought to be verification enough for you. It's in his holy writ. This is what God said. You don't have to worry about what man said. Man said a whole lot of different things. But see, you want to be right with God? You got to do it his way. Young man, what you waiting for? Young woman, what are you waiting for? Time is not on our side. You say, well, is time is on our side. Yes, it is. No, no, it's not. Our days, if you just look around, our days are getting shorter and shorter. For younger people, they get shorter and shorter for you too. There's always some situation that's popping off and coming up. And guess what? You could be next. Well, you're just trying to scare us. But dude, well, I got to do whatever I got to do. And what I'm speaking is reality. Yeah. All you got to do is turn on the news. It's stuff happening every day. And God is giving you time to obey Him. 
If you're a member of the body of Jesus Christ, you say, you know what? I haven't been functioning the way I need to function. Why don't you ask for prayer with that? See, and once you make a decision to do better, the church just got strong. And we need more people to make that same decision. Once you move beyond the point of just being a Sunday, another church, so I can grow in my faith and add, look, to, to be an example to somebody. That's what God wants. He gave his life on Calvary's cross. You don't think he wants that for you? You can read this book. He wants you. He said, look, we talked about this morning. He, look, he came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. He left us an example that you and I ought to follow. Man, you want to be a blessing to your children? Allow them to see you serve God. That will live on even after you go. But if they see you wishy-washy, if they see you up and down, if they see you inconsistent, if they see you in and out, that's an example you need too. When things get hard, don't come to church. When things go good, then you can come praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, God is good. <laughs> things are bad, I'm, I'll see y'all later. <laughs> but see, sometimes that's, that's, look, that's how we mimic. And pick people pick up on the fact. That's not the right example. Let's be strong, y'all. Young people, make a make a, a greater effort. You say, on well, my text messages this week, I ain't gonna put no 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 uh, you know middle finger emojis up and no no emojis that say no no negative thing. Y'all don't know what emojis are, don't worry about. Uh, but yeah, you know what I'm talking about. On your snap this week, put up all positive stuff. Yeah, that's right. Huh? Yeah. Except the rapper that got changed all around. I keep like you know locked up. I mean, y'all, hey, they said, put something positive up there. Say something about the Lord this week. Huh? You gotta be positive. You know what I'm saying? You got you gotta be strong. You, you know, we, we, pr we promote other stuff. Why don't you promote something with God? Put put that on your Facebook page. So look, stop being stop being scared. The world not scared. They put it all out front. People that came out of the closet, to kick the door off, they hit everything. I mean, people come, people coming out doing what they the world will do what they want. Why the church gotta be so quiet? Why Christians gotta be well, I don't want to offend nobody. You know the world don't care about offending you. <laughs> they don't ask you what you think about it. It is what it is. Huh? See, that it's starting to get warmer. People just let it all hang out. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. Be a Christian. Well, you know what? That's the way the world do it. That's what you got to do it. Amen? Some things resign for the bedroom. For your husband. And your wife. Let me not just say the bedroom. Your husband and your wife. Amen. Huh? Save yourself. Because if you're not careful, we can get caught up with the world. And then it's okay. You're a child of God. Right. We got to walk like it. We got to live like it. We're about to stand and say the Savior's invitation. If you want to come to Jesus, there's no better time than obey him than right now. Let's go. Let's stand and say. Let's stand and say. Free words. <clears throat> come on. You need prayer. Come on. Come on. Why don't you come? Why don't you come? Let us haste. So, hey, is there one that needs prayer today? The bread. Is there one? Is there one? Is there one that needs to give their life today? Why don't you come? The fountain of love. Young man, you won't run. Is there one? So, is there one that needs prayer? Why don't you come? Is there one? And is there one? Jesus is calling. The bread. Will you come? 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 God bless you. So they go. God bless you as you come. God bless you as you come. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. He said, I just need prayer. I just need prayer. You're in the house of prayer right now. He said, What? He said, What? There's a living street. Living street with the crystal. He said, I'm going to stand for God. Come what may. I'm going to stand. Like why don't you say flood? You need to be stronger. Why don't you while the water God is calling you right now? Let the wind How you gonna respond? Don't let us close out this service without you coming. The call the calls coming out. Freely go. Will you come? Will you come? I'm talking to you. Will you come? Will you come? And free will you come? Will you come? It is for you and me. Thirsty soul, thirsty soul, we hear the well. Now, cold is a mountain. 
Just in Jesus, cause I know he's gonna 